Welcome back to part two of styling your application. In this one, we're gonna wrap up what we started in the last video. Now, the first thing I wanna style is what lives on the about page, that is our image. We previously had a style in place that targeted that, and if you remember, it looked a little bit like this. Image, then we set up our curly braces, and all I did was set a width. Width equals 250. When we do this, it's also going to adjust the height proportionally so the image doesn't look sort of skewed. And if I refresh the page, things look fine. Now, this is going to change all images on the page, which might not be what we want. Imagine we have a large background image or we have an image that takes up the entire width of the content. That's going to need a different set of styles. So instead of targeting every single image, we're going to use the class selector. That allows us to target a specific set of elements. And right here, we start off with dot followed by a name for this class. And since this is a portrait image, I could call the class something like portrait. So it's dot followed by the class name. Now at no point anywhere in our code have we ever typed portrait, which means that the style is never gonna get applied. If I refresh the page, we're back to that really big image. To actually have this style used, we set up a class attribute on our HTML elements where we want these styles to be applied. In this case, that would be for the about page and it would be this image right here. So as I just mentioned, that is class equals inside of quotes. We can provide as many classes as we want. In this case, just one portrait. If I wanted another, it would be space followed by whatever the other class name is. So by listing out the class, I'm essentially saying, I want this element to take on the styles applied to that class, which in this case is just the one we've set up here. So this is just a different way to target elements on your page. Now, if I refresh things, we have our portrait image showing up as expected, and we could choose to have other images that have a completely different set of styles. So now that we have this in place, what I wanna focus on is that footer. As I navigate between the pages, you'll notice that the footer is just as high as it can possibly be. Ideally, it would be sticking to the bottom of the page, and that's what we're gonna focus on setting up. Now to do that, we're gonna have to adjust a few things. So let's go ahead and get started by closing down a header as we're no longer going to need that. I wanna crack open about, index, 404, and help. So our four views, and we can start with the home page. So I'll drag index to the front of the list. And the goal here is to get that sticky footer in place. I don't want it up top. I want it pushed to the bottom of the browser. Now to do that, we're gonna use a simple version of a slightly advanced CSS technique known as Flexbox. If you take a course on CSS, Flexbox will be covered. We're gonna use just the very basics here to achieve a sticky footer. The first thing we need to do is create another element in order to wrap our content as needed. So what we're gonna do is use the div element like we've done before. I'm gonna put one right here inside of body. And what needs to go inside of there is everything but the footer. That's going to include the header partial, but it's also going to include any page content. So for the moment, let's add a paragraph to demonstrate that. I could say, use this site to get your weather. Perfect. So we want all of our page content, the header and anything else we're going to show inside of this div, and the footer is going to sit outside of it. Using Flexbox, we're gonna have this take up all of the space available except what the footer needs. That's going to give us the sticky footer look where the footer is pushed to the bottom of the page. Now we are gonna target this div with a set of styles. Since div is a very generic element, it's best to apply a class to it and use that class. I can go ahead and pick whatever name I like for this. I'm gonna use main hyphen content as the name. Now we can correctly style our application, getting that sticky footer look. Over inside of styles.css, we have to write a few lines of code. First, we have to enable Flexbox. This is a different way to lay out your items. And we use that by setting display equal to flex. For the moment, I'm just going to use this space to break up our other styles. 
with our Flexbox styles, which will be down here. Now, if we do that, it's gonna give us some undesired results. If I refresh the page, I can see that my footer is now on the right and the rest of my content is now on the left. Now that's not what we want and Flexbox gives us a way to adjust that. There is a flex hyphen direction property. The default value is row, which means everything goes from left to right. We can optionally change that to column and this is gonna have everything go from top to bottom and that's what we want. So right here, I refresh the page and now we're basically back to what we had before, but with Flexbox enabled. Now, the other thing we need to do is to set the height for the body to take up the entire browser height. Currently, it stops right about here, and that's a problem because I wanna push the footer all the way to the bottom of the browser window. To get that done, all we're going to do is set the minimum height equal to the browser's height which is 100 VH. VH stands for the viewport height. So in this case, we have 100% of the viewport height, the viewport being this box where your content shows up. If we didn't want 100, we could use another value like 50, which would be 50% of that viewport height. But in this case, we do indeed want 100. Now that we have this in place, we are done styling the body. We don't have the look we want yet, but we are very close to getting it. The only other thing we need to do is target that class we created. So dot followed by the class name. I called it main hyphen content, and we're going to apply one more Flexbox style. This one is called flex hyphen grow. This allows a given element to grow to take up as much space as it needs. We're gonna set this to one, which tells Flexbox that the main content should take up all leftover space. Now, if we refresh things, what do we see? I can see my footer is pushed to the bottom of the page. And as I navigate between the pages, I can see that only the home page is working. And that is because we made some changes to the structure, adding that div into place. We'll have to make the same changes to the other page. But right here, we are indeed getting the look we were hoping for. So once again, if you want to learn more about Flexbox, I recommend checking it out by taking a Udemy CSS course or checking it out on a free service like YouTube. It's a great tool and it's definitely something worth adding to your CSS skill set. All right, so from here, we're going to focus on our individual template files. The first thing we need to do is make some adjustments to the other pages. I am going to set up a div just by typing the element name and hitting tab to auto-generate the tag. And then I'll use class of main content here on this page, and I'll bring all the main content inside. That's gonna make sure that things work well for our 404 page, there we go. Now everything is gonna work great, and we can test things by pulling up the site. I'm gonna go to localhost 3000 forward slash me, I get my 404 page, and it looks great with that sticky footer in place. Just two more pages left. We have help.hbs here. I'm going to use div dot main hyphen content. This is a shorthand for setting up a div element with the class of main content. And if I hit tab, that is exactly what happens. There are all sorts of great shorthands out there. And all we're going to do is take the content and paste it right inside. Perfect. Now we can save the file. We can navigate over to the help page and we're getting our sticky footer there as well. The last page is the about page, which currently does not have that structure in place. Let's go ahead and fix that. About.hbs. I'm going to generate that div once again. Div.main hyphen content. Then inside of there, we put everything that's on the page except for the footer. I'm gonna paste all of that in, indent it correctly, remove the extra space, and now we're done. I can refresh the browser, and right here, I now have all of my pages styled in a way that's uniform. As you switch between them, it feels like the same site, which is exactly what we were going for. Now, from here, there are a couple small changes I would like to make. One is to customize the title in the tab, as well as the icon that's showing up. So right here, we do that inside of head, I'm gonna start by setting up the title by opening and closing the title tag and right inside we put the title. So for about, I could use about, 
that's going to show up in the tab. And now we can do the same thing for the other pages. For help inside of head, I will set up title and I will say help. For 404, we're also going to set up that title and I will use 404. And then finally for the home page, we will set up the title and I can go ahead and use something like weather. Now, as we navigate between the pages in the browser, we'll see those showing up. I'll refresh the home page. I get weather. I then have about for the about page and help for the help page. The last thing we're going to do is customize the icon that shows up in the tab. This also requires us to add a little code to the header, but first we need the image. Now I've already picked one out for you that you can use. That is links.mead.io forward slash pick three. Pick three contains a very small icon of a cloud in front of a sun. We're gonna go ahead and right click that, save image as, and we're going to put this in our project image directory. So on the desktop, that's where I have mine. I have the web server folder in there. We have public image. That's where I wanna put the content. I'm gonna save it inside of there, close the browser tab and make sure it's actually showing up. So inside of Visual Studio Code, I have my images directory and in there I have weather.png. Let's go ahead and actually use it and to do this, we use link, similar to how we linked in a style sheet, though in this case, we're linking in an icon. So I'll set up link. We're going to set up rel as well as href. Now the relationship between the document and what we're about to link in is not a style sheet. It is an icon and the href is the path to that image forward slash image forward slash. I've called this one weather.png. Perfect. Now, if I do refresh the home page, I'll navigate to it. We can see that we have our little weather icon showing up, making the site feel much nicer and a little more real. I can then take that one line and copy it to my other files. So I'll copy it over under the title for 404, under the title for help, and finally under the title for about. Now, as we navigate between all of the pages on our site, it doesn't feel like anything's been left out. The tab is nice and styled. The content itself is nice and styled. And we have that uniform feel as we navigate between the pages. Now, even if you plan on spending all of your time writing node applications, it's still worth at least brushing up on the basics of HTML and CSS. That's going to allow you to create nice front ends for your node JS applications. Now, even if you're on a large team or that's not your job, it's still nice to have that skill set so you can whip up together something basic, at least making it look a little nicer than it would otherwise be with no styles in place. All right, that's it for this video. And that is it for this section. We covered quite a bit in this section, exploring a few very important topics. We explored how to set up a web server with express. And we did that in app.js. We learned all sorts of things like how we can use handlebars to render templates, how we can serve up static assets and how we can send back JSON data, set up 404 pages and more. Now we've still only scratched the surface of what express can do. It's something we'll end up using throughout the rest of the class. Even as we integrate more advanced features like real world databases, I'm excited to continue on with the course. I'll see you in the section intro for the next one.